Hi, this is a minute of overpass. My name is Eric and I make apps. Now this week I want to show you how to localize your app into other languages so it can be used all over the world. Okay, so we recently tr uh, created two new apps, the CanText and Algebra Study Cards. CanText came out uh, last month, Algebra Study Cards came out just yesterday. Now the thing that's different about these two is we took the time before we released them to translate them into as many languages as we can. So it's called localizing the app. We did this with EarSpy a few years ago and it, it tripled our downloads. We had like a thousand downloads of EarSpy a day and it went up to 3,000. So it was like a huge boost, right? And it really picked up in Brazil and uh, in Thailand and you know, for some reason those are the two big places, right? So I want to kind of show you what I've done. It might take a little bit over a minute, but it, it, it's not impossible to do. It's a little bit difficult administratively, but uh, in code it's not, it's not difficult. So if you don't know, I'll show you my screen here. Uh, Android and iPhone native uh, programming language both have a, a, na a native way of doing this. So uh, in Android, you have a something called a strings.xml file as a configuration file. Now it's good practice when you use a any text within your app, you put it in this file as opposed to just putting it in the code. Uh, and the reason for that is so you see here is an XML file, you know, about EarSpy. Everywhere where we're using uh, language in the app is in this file. And the reason you do this is that you know once you finish with all the development, you could go through and have that translated into other strings XML file and include those in the in the code. And Android will automatically go through and take that file instead of your your uh, the default one. So I'll say if it needs uh, say the string here start record, if it can't find that in the uh, in the local language file, it will go back to the default, which in this case would be English. So here you can see. Uh, values.ar is, is in Arabic, uh, values.de is in, is in German, and the platform itself will handle right to left languages, left, you know, left to right languages. It does that very well. Now iPhone does the same thing except it uses something called a plist file or plist folders where you put all the strings inside. Now when we developed EarSpy to begin with, the developers didn't do any of that. They just did, you know, they just got it working. So it was, um, you know, we had to go through and rewrite a considerable part of it just to get it, uh, make it localizable. So this is something to consider if you're having an app commissioned. Uh, just make sure your developers are doing it the right way. Even if you only plan on doing it in English to begin with, later on you may want to you know, broaden your horizons and, and release it in other languages. So what we're using is Corona SDK. We're not using a native platform. So we kind of had to write our own here. Uh, here's algebra study cards. You know, we've got all the strings here uh, in the app uh, in English, in French, German. Uh, you know, basically, basically we took every language that was available uh, on the app stores and we had it translated. So here's how we went about doing that. Uh, we basically, when you're doing an app, what you want to do is kind of have everything that you want in the app figured out as early on as you can, and basically put, take everything out and put it into a spreadsheet. And now I use Google Sheets as opposed to Excel, uh, and I'll show you why. Here's a, an example of a Google Sheet that we use. Uh, and I've taken all the strings out of the app, or all the, when I say strings, I mean the, the text, uh, and put it in a column here. So if we have a unique uh, code here on the left, you know, title on clipboard, on the, and then right here we have you know, what it actually means. So here it's actually algebra study cards. And across the top here, I have every language that I want it translated into. Now, one of the nice things about Google Sheets is it integrates really well with Google Translate. So you're able to just use a, uh, a little bit, a little function here, Google Translate, translate this into English, you know, translate this cell into, into French, translate it into, uh, into English, translate you know, from English into French, from English into Spanish. And we were able to just go through and create all these uh, using Google Translate. Now, Google Translate is terrible for translation, right? I do not, I don't recommend it. But, uh, but to begin with, for testing, it was, it was great, right? So, so what we ended up with after we take everything out is we have a spreadsheet like this, right? So the nice thing, uh, the second nice thing about Google Sheets is it's very easy to share with lots of people. So what we did was we created an ODesk job. This is the same thing I did with EarSpy a few years ago. It was much easier this time through with Google Sheets. Uh, it's create an ODesk job and just say. Uh, add as many languages as I can. Here's a here's a the Odesk or you know this week it was changed to Upwork. 
Uh, but here's a job. Say less than 1,500 words translated from English into Chinese, Hindi, Danish, Zulu, and more. Right? And a brief description saying you know, how many words that I have, uh, what I want uh, translated, uh, and basically saying that I'm willing to pay $5 per language. Right? I'm not looking for legal. You know, a lot of people come through saying they'll do it for $80. They'll do it for, you know, some people said $100. Uh, some people would say, you know, they, they stuck with 10. I was, I was willing to go to 10, but, you know, most people, you know, I would go with five. So, and we got, you know, every language was done or most every language was done with that amount. Um, so, and the, the other thing you need to do, right, and this is something is very key, is don't just trans take the words from the app. You also have to take the words from the description. So you have the, you know, the app description, which you're going to need done in other languages. And also, uh, you also need other app store strings. You need the title for Google Play. You need the title for uh, the subtitle for Google Play. You need the keywords for iTunes. And if you're going to do... Uh, you know, annotated screenshots or screenshots with uh, with text on them. You you need to get all those translated as well. So you know, depending on how you're going to do that, because you want to have the uh, the translations in the screenshots too, right? So so basically, we took that uh, gave everybody access to this Google spreadsheet. Uh, everything is is tracked, so you know, we could always roll back if somebody messed it up. And they went through and. Yeah, you know, every time somebody would work on it, I'd go through and check it, and I would highlight it green just so I could keep track of which ones are done and which ones aren't. So for uh, for canned text here, you can see we we had French, Italian, German. We didn't find anybody to do uh, Danish or Dutch, uh, or we did, but they, they wanted a bit more money, and I just you know they weren't that important to me, so we stuck with the Google Translate for those. Uh, we weren't able to get Belarusian, but we were able to get Afrikaans, Arabic. Uh, and just a few of them that we weren't able to to do. So once that's done, we take these out and we put them back into the app. Like I said, we're using Corona SDK, so we're, because we're using uh, Excel or Google Sheets here, we could easily write a formula here which would put it back into the format that we wanted in. Uh, and then that way, you know, it's a living document. When we're finished, we just take that, put it back into the app. So uh, and then once that's done. You have to do a few little things to make sure that it, with a hybrid framework to make sure that the app description actually changes at the bottom uh, and things like that. But it's something that it really pays off in the end. Now, if you have an app, then you can make it localizable to, you don't have to do every language like we did, but you the big ones, I would recommend doing Portuguese, definitely, uh, Spanish uh, afterwards, and uh, Chinese uh, Mandarin simplified uh, as opposed to traditional. If you only had to do three, do those. So, so it worked out really well. We spent a lot less money than if we had gone through a service. We had a lot more control over the process. We met a lot of really good people doing it, and uh, you know, really excited about these two apps. So, again, Algebra Study Cards was released yesterday. You know, please have a look. A Can Text was released last month. Now, depending on which language your your phone is set to, that's the language you should see within the app. And that's it for this week's very long but hopefully informative minute of overpass. Now, if you're listening through the iTunes podcast, uh, please leave a review. Love to hear what you have to say. And if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, please subscribe to the channel. I love to keep uh, keep in touch and let you know what's what's going on. So that's it. I'll talk to you next week. Mm -hmm.